Hello, precious people of the earth. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am so excited to be here with you all. We have had a little bit of pausing in our interactions together, but I'm so excited to be back. I have so many life updates, but I will contain that for now, and I will wait to share that with you. Today, we are going to be talking about restoration. Now, for me, I like to pick a word each year on what my word of the year is going to be. I spend time trying to make sure I'm really hearing from God, make sure I'm tuning in to what Holy Spirit is telling me. And this year, I really felt like my word was restore. Now, that can come to me in any kind of way, I feel like, um, whether that be seeing it in the Bible, hearing it in sermon, hearing it anywhere over and over again, I really feel like that's how Holy Spirit speaks to me. That is the word that Holy Spirit gave me for this year. And my little slogan has been 24, no, the year of 24, ready for more, let's restore. Ooh, ooh, that is so nice. That was off the top of the dome, okay, bars, singer, songwriter. Yep. The steps for restoration. Definitely, there are so many steps for restoration, but these are just a few that I have been cognizant to. The first step has been self awareness. Now, that was a word from last year, I believe, but self awareness has really been a key factor in my healing process and restoration. Now, Self-awareness just includes recognition of the things that I have needed to address in my life. Now, for me, I have experienced anxiety for a big majority of my life. And it came to a point in time where I realized that this is not what God has for me. This is not the life that he has intended for me. Anxiety is a spirit of fear, and that is something that I do not have to claim as my own. That is not something that defines me. So in this recognition and uh, realization, I found that there are certain things that I need to address on my part and certain things that I need to tune into and really adjust in order to receive my complete deliverance, my healing, and my restoration whenever it comes to anxiety. So some things that I've been doing is really becoming aware of my habitual thinking and how I um, address certain things in my life. Now, a lot of the things that I think about, my personal themes whenever it comes to anxiety, um, it's been a matter of really having to adjust the way those enter my mind and the way that I look at them. So it really has just been a matter of mind exercises and being aware of what I am thinking. Think about what you're thinking about. I don't know where I've heard that, but I know I've heard it from somewhere. Somebody great said that. If you know who it is, put it down in the comments. Uh, but it's really just been a matter of being self-aware of my thought processes and aware of my surroundings and my environment. So awareness, just pay attention, open in my eyes. That's been a really big factor in my process of restoration and healing. Number two, commitment to change. Commitment to change has included for me my perspective, changing my perspective, the way I look at things, the way I think about things, the way I say things, um, your mind is the first thing that will address situations, I feel like. Um, the way you think about something, it's going to be the first thing that happens. The second thing I feel like that happens is your words. Now, the tongue is powerful. There is power in the tongue. So, the things that I'm saying on a day-to-day, -day, it's important to be cognizant of 
what I'm allowing to come out of my mouth. If I wake up and I'm immediately negative, saying this is gonna be a horrible day. Wow, this person is so annoying. This is gonna be a long day. Wow, I hate this environment. This day is gonna suck. Oh my gosh. If I wake up and I already have those thoughts coming into my mind, if I'm already waking up with a bad attitude, then I can just already prepare myself to have a bad day. So it's a matter of first changing my thought processes, changing my perspective, and changing the way I speak. I have to be more alert to the things that I'm, I'm allowing to come out of my mouth. It is important for me to be optimistic. Now that can be tiring, I'm not gonna lie. It can be exhausting. But at the end of the day, I have to remind myself that the enemy is going to feed off of me being pessimistic. So it is my duty to myself. My duty is to my heart. It is my duty to myself to be optimistic. I'm not doing it for anyone else. I have to do it for me. The more that I speak life into myself, the more that I speak positive over my day, positivity over the way that I am throughout the day, it's going to have a big impact on what my day will look like, on how my thoughts are going to be, on how I address different situations, and on how I interact with other people. Commitment to change may also include my habits in eating and fitness. A lot of you know that fitness is very important to me. In my experience of depression, that was something that was put to a halt and it was definitely a stressful time for me being that fitness is so important. Many know that when you are experiencing depression, you don't have a lot of energy, you don't have a lot of motivation, and that's just not a place where you feel like you want to get up and move and jump around and do a whole lot of that. So that was an area of my life where I had really gotten out of the habit of working out frequently and paying attention to the things that I eat and what I'm consuming. So now that I am feeling a lot better and I am feeling like myself again, I am realizing again that the feelings that I once had towards my fitness and my health. And that is something that I had to commit to. It's a matter of setting those routines for myself day to day. Okay, if I get home at this time, how long is it gonna take me to walk my pup and get changed for working out? I set times for myself. I write it down in my to-do list and I make it a priority. No matter how much I don't wanna work out, I have to remember that this is part of my commitment to myself and that is something that's going to be beneficial for my restoration. It also is a matter of incorporating that self-discipline and really seeking that self-motivation and sometimes it might not come easily. For me, prayer definitely works when it comes to finding that self-motivation. Um, a lot of times you can be in a rut and it can be really hard. It can be so hard. I mean, who wants to get up and do jumping jacks? Who wants to roll around on the ground and work on their stomach muscles? That's just not fun sometimes. So I will have to pray. I have to ask, Holy Spirit, give me the strength to get up and work out. And when I'm working out, sometimes I do think about a burger while I'm on that treadmill. Sometimes I do think about sweets and pastries and ice cream and it helps me get to my goal. Run to the hamburger. Run to the chicken nuggets. Run to what makes you happy. If the slice of pizza is what you need, run to it. Do what helps you have that motivation. Commitment to change has also included me being cognizant of the things that I am consuming. So in my personal experience, that has included being mindful of the things that I am consuming when it comes to the media or music. And even though I'm thinking about having something unhealthy while I'm on the treadmill, that doesn't mean that I can go and eat it. So it has been a matter of me finding that self-discipline whenever it comes to those things. It's not necessarily a matter of always being able to listen to the things I want to listen to or the things that I want to watch. Sometimes I'll start a show. If I see 
a scene that is not necessarily corresponding the right way with my spirit, I will need to turn it off. I have to be cognizant to those things. What is lawful is not always expedient. Is that what it is? I don't know. Mom always said that. What is lawful is not always expedient. Pay attention to what feels right to you because at the end of the day, even though everyone's listening to the new album from so-and-so, that might not be something that you can listen to. That might not be beneficial for your restoration. So I really have to be in tune with what I need to put into my body, whether that be music, media, food, drinks, whatever. Finally, I've really been tuning in to self-compassion. Now for me, I have experienced the spirit of perfectionism and that is just something that's not possible we are human we are not god and we are not perfect it is impossible for us to be perfect so to strive for perfection is unrealistic and that is something that i have had to come to terms with that is something that i have had to put to rest it is exhausting to be perfect it is so time consuming and yes there are benefits to being detail oriented but at the end of the day perfection is not something that i need to be striving for and it may be relieving to hear that you're never going to reach perfection it's just it's not possible so being mindful of that i have found the road to releasing perfection to be a little bit rocky i have experienced not being as kind to myself when it comes to my thoughts of not achieving everything on my to-do list for a day or if i had a moment of feeling weak and my thoughts were all over the place sometimes i have experienced not being as um, gentle with myself whenever it comes to being understanding and lending that compassion the way I would to someone else and so being self-aware in those instances have been very beneficial in recognizing those key areas of okay this didn't go exactly the way that I wanted it to go but how can we move forward that doesn't mean I'm a failure that doesn't mean that I am going to let other people down it's just a matter of it not going as planned and that's okay so i've really had to be mindful of the way that i am addressing myself the way that i talk to me and i have to think of myself as someone else i'm speaking to i wouldn't be hard on someone else the way that i am on myself and i had to really ask myself why what is it that causes me to be so angry with me if i'm not perfect and so that really goes back to that first aspect that we talked about for the restoration process and it is self-awareness really digging in deep to the root of why it is that i am the way that i am so these are just a few elements of the restoration process and there these are key things that i have found to be important for me to focus on now if any of you have any other aspects and any other things that you have realized are important for your restoration please feel free to share below we would love to hear we would love to discuss it i'm sure all of us are on a journey of some sort uh, to finding our true self to becoming whole so it is important for us all to communicate and share if you have any other details on how to become the best self that you can be we want to hear it we're here for it so please feel free to leave anything in the comments below so that concludes our discussion today do not forget to like comment share and subscribe and i cannot wait to see you in the next video